Scott Taylor, Data Whisperer. Welcome to today's episode of Tell Me Your Data Story with me, Scott Taylor, the Data Whisperer. People are telling me their data story. I got Kate Strachney on today. Very exciting. She is, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about it later, but all great stuff. Just waiting for uh, my things to kind of sync up here, if you don't mind. Just give me a sec. Make sure I got the uh, engagement platform going. How's everybody doing? Where is it here? There we go. All right, we set. All right, oops. She is. Uh... All right, what's up? We got Hardeep on here. How are, how you doing? I'm going to do his podcast in a little bit. Anyway, all right, officially starting. Let me stop this here. Welcome, everybody, to Tell Me. Your data story, Scott Taylor here at uh, Data Whisper World Headquarters, high atop the Fairweather Tower and Resort in beautiful Black Rock, Connecticut. Gorgeous day today. When the summer comes, I'm going to do one of these outside because I have a view that I'm embarrassed to have. I certainly don't even deserve it. I can see I'm right on Long Island, Long Island Sound. I got a lovely view of this iconic New England lighthouse, Long Island all the way across, beautiful boats in the summer, everything's nice, but, you know, we're stuck here, right? So hopefully everybody's hanging in, hunkering down on day whatever of however long it's going to be, and we're uh, kind of trying, finding ways to keep busy, to keep everybody engaged here. Let me see, where's everybody uh, calling in from? So who do we got here? We got, ah, uh, George, finally. Yes, George Farrakhan's here. So I guess we officially have a show if George is signed in. That makes it official here. That's wonderful. We got Arizona. We got Keep Up the Good Work. We got France. I've counted so far 25 countries have called in one way or another. So could I be more excited? Probably even further on here, I'll be more excited. But we're on episode five. Remember, our goal is at least 100. But you can't get to 100 until you get to 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we're going we're gonna to move these along here. Um, so what do we have today? Just a couple of things as usual that I'd love to share with you here. Uh, Kate's, our, Kate's our guest. I had somebody yesterday send a comment to me, and it kind of blew my mind. That's me. The emoji is me. They didn't add that on there. But we were talking about stories. And I'm not going to identify who they are because I don't think it's that important. But it's a mindset I would like to address here to you, the data people out there. Remember, this is a data show. It's not a software show. It's not a hardware show. We are all about the data. And data is kind of, I look at data separately from analytics. So if you follow me, you know me, you heard me rant at all. I really look at, okay, data management, master data, metadata, reference data, MDM, RDM, data governance, kind of that bucket. That's really data. Then there's analytics, business intelligence, AI, BI, data science, all the things people do with data to create an enormous amount of value. It's not a competition here, right? It's not like data or analytics. People always talk about data and analytics. So they talk about it separately. Now, some people refer to analytics as also data, but then why do we say data and analytics? That's like saying food and pizza. So I look at data actually as kind of the food part. I'll get to that in a minute. So I, I was talking about, um, I was listening to this, this conversation, this, this uh, stream, and people were talking about telling data stories. Obviously, that's a big, big topic for me, telling data stories. We all have a data story to tell. And my premise is really based on, I tell stories about data, about the data itself, why an enterprise needs all that foundational information, why data management is the core to any kind of major initiative, why if you don't have data governance, you're not going to have digital transformation, you're not going to have the IoT, you're not going to be able to do account-based marketing, you're not going to be able to do AI and ML and all the rest of it. I mean, it really is, for me, that's the truth. And then you apply meaning to it. So truth before meaning, not chicken or egg here, egg and omelet. You need the truth first. You need those eggs first before you can make an omelet. I find this as uh, about as basic and as undeniable as gravity. So it's like my core manifesto, if you were. Truth versus meaning. Obviously, I'm the truth guy. So the idea that stories, that data stories, 
And I'd love to have Kate on that to, to hear about this a bit because she's got a lot. She, her whole group is called Stories by Data. She tells data stories for a living. So she's wonderful at it. But data stories can have a couple different flavors. You can have stories about data and you can have stories with data. And stories with data are the analytics side. So for somebody to tell me, I don't think data without analytics is even a story. I think that's absolutely crazy. All right. So why does it have to be either or? You can have analytics stories and you can have data stories. So enough of that for now, I guess. I, at least I got it off my chest. I hope you feel better. I certainly feel better. I feel like I made some progress today. So uh, hopefully that's not something that, you know, blows everybody's mind, but certainly blew mine. I, I did a post the other day, which you should check out. Um, and it was about truth and meaning. And it was about data versus analytics. And so I like the analogy. The best analogy I use for data is data is food and analytics is the recipe, okay, that makes it into some glorious meal. And so as Julia Child never said, you know, every great chef can still use bad ingredients. That's my Julia Child impression, in case you're wondering. I know it sounds exactly like her. But uh, she never said that. People don't say that. If you don't have great ingredients, if you don't have that foundational data, if you don't have the truth in that data first, the meaning you get out of it is going to be worthless. It's not that it's going to have less value, but meaning without truth is, is BS, is baloney, is fake news, is alternate facts, is something that's going to bring somebody astray. So I'd love to have you take a look at this uh, little article here. I got some pretty decent uh, chatter on LinkedIn there about truth versus meaning. And uh, that's kind of my premise. So um, let me take a moment here. Let me see how people are, what do we got? We got mind blown here. We got NYC, we got Los Angeles, LA. All right, my mother's out there. My sister's out there, stay safe. My daughter's out there, three great women in my life, mother, sister, daughter, all out there in Los Angeles. I was actually born in Los Angeles, just as you in case you're wondering. Greetings from Denmark. Hello from New York City. I agree. The quality of any analysis depends on the quality of data that's used. Nicola, perfect. You're in the club. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, what's next? Today's sponsor is, let me let me pull this up here because this is cool. We got in, in, in honor of Kate, it's her merch shop here, data, data Kated. You got to love that double pun there. I'm going to ask her why she doesn't spell Kated with a K. That's probably pushing it too much. But the Data Kated merch shop there on Spreadshirt, they've got everything. They got T-shirts. They got muscle shirts. They got hoodies. They got an apron. Something was, you know, I was supposed to get one for the show here, but uh, COVID kind of slowed down some of the shipping. They got aprons. They got baby togs, whatever you want there. I don't know if the Data Whisperer discount code works on that, but give it a try. But uh, anyway, if you want to know more about it, go up to Spreadshirt, Story by Data, or just type data in the comments. Jennifer Cooper's on there. Thumbs up. Kate, just type data in the comments, and we'll make sure to get you the information on all this cool merch. And uh, working on a Data Whisper merch shop. That'll be a little bit later down the line. Let me get the show going first. But we're excited to have uh, some cool stuff there to help you tell your story with your data. Um, so without further ado, we got Kate coming on here. Really? She, what I would give you a list of the stuff she does, but the stuff she doesn't do is a shorter list. I think probably it's, you know, what, 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 what doesn't she do here? She's got, uh, first of all, she's a, a, a brilliant long time data scientist. She's been doing this daily coding thing, which is already like mildly intense. I don't do anything every day. So I sit up on day 89, day 90, 92. It's fabulous. And so if, you, if you're into that stuff, I, you know me, I'm not a coder. This is all I know about Panda is right here. That's about as far as I go on Panda. So uh, I don't do that kind of stuff. But she, you know, she's got a great follower. She's got like 70,000 folks following, most, a lot in the data science side, which is fabulous. Two-time, not once, but two-time LinkedIn top voice in data science and uh, um analytics she's basically the meryl streep of uh linkedin here when it comes to this kind of stuff which is very hard she's a mom she's a runner she's uh uh become a, a great friend in linkedin here we've done two interviews already i think we actually did three 
But uh, I was on her humans of data science while I was checking out this set. set and I brought one of my non-humans, the chief dog officer. Also, uh, Kate and I met with Zach Scriffin in the Empire State Building, which was exciting back in the days. Remember when we used to be able to like go out and see people? Back in those days, it was only last year. And we had a little LinkedIn Live there. That was fun. I think I did another one with her. But now it's time to turn the tables. I get to ask the piercing 60 minutes type questions. I'm going to be firing them in here. We'll see how it goes. But uh, without, uh, what else we got here? So also, she writes books. Not just like, not, not, not singular. It's plural, okay? Books and books. Data literacy for kids, which I definitely want to hear about. Disruptors. 101, I, I, I can't read it there, but 101 quotes about, uh, about data and, and, and management. And so she's, she's a, um, a renaissance woman, I would say, across all these things. And so uh, let me bring her in here. Welcome right away. Hello, Kay, finally. Hello, How Scott. Are you, Kay? Oh my God, that <laughs> intro was amazing. I'm, I'm exhausted from your intro there. Did, what didn't I cover? Did I miss anything? No. I think you covered all of it. I love okay, the panda. Phew. I love your rant about stories. <laughs> it's, really? it's all great. I, I can't believe it. Why, like, why would somebody say, oh, well, it, it's like people jump into it all the time. When people say, well, you know, there's no value in data. And I just go, stop right there. I don't care what the rest of your sentence is. <laughs> it just, it just being a data guy. It just kills yeah. me when people say that. It's like, oh, it's not about the data. It's about the information. It's about the wisdom. That's like saying it's not about the food. It's about the meal. How yeah. stupid does that sound, right? It's like, well, yeah. a raw carrot is no good. It's not until <laughs> you cook the carrot because raw data doesn't have any value. So I'll, I'll that's anyway, you're the guest. You should talk a little bit here. But that's, you know, that's, that gets me going, obviously. Obviously, I think we can yeah. all see that, Scott. Yeah, it's a way to poke me for sure. <laughs> oh, we got Nigeria here. We got hello from the UK. We got a couple of people looking for uh, more info on your uh, um, stuff. So that's cool. We'll, we'll follow up with them. Eileen and Christina, we'll make sure we get all of them. So anyway, hello. Kate, what's your data story? My data story. At first, I was just looking at the comments. I see Susan is here. So now it's a party. Hi, oh, Susan. okay. And hi, Jennifer, and I saw a oh, bunch Susan of people Walsh? in the faces, and George oh, was yeah, there. For sure. Yeah, she's mandatory. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my data story? Your data story. the story about my data? Which the story you about your data. Either, either one. You can take either one, whichever one you want there. Uh, well, my company is called Story by Data, and yes. it really focused on telling stories with data in a couple of different ways. One is training people to understand their data, visualize, and analyze their data. And two is uh, kind of helping people who are working with data products, machine learning products, or AI um, share their story about their kind of sharing their data story or their product story um, okay. via media, specifically LinkedIn, because that's where I live. Oh, okay. So, oh, you work, so you work with some of the brands like the service provider side who are trying to talk about their services or kind of what their services bring to data? Is that it? Yeah, absolutely. So companies that, let's say, if you've developed the coolest thing in machine learning, uh, but you don't necessarily have the right audience, I sometimes work with those companies only if there's really a fit in the, you know, with my audience to help them share that message. Okay. All right. So you're an agency as well, you're like a media agency. Everything. Every, everything. Yeah. Again, as, as I said, the list of what you do, don't do is shorter than the list of what you do. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll take that too. So how'd you get started though? So what was your first data story? What was your first, I mean, now you're super accomplished, data science, top <laughs> voice, all these books, but it had to start somewhere. Where did it start for you? Yes, it actually started by accident. So before I got into data, I was in risk management and regulatory compliance, um, helping clients, specifically the financial services industry. Okay. And I was having my first child and I told the employer at the time that I would like to have a work from home gig if possible. And basically after a couple of months of searching, I found something that allowed me to stay home, but it involved me analyzing data. So I got a data set, I got Tableau software access, and I basically had to pull some insights. And that's how it all started. I, I took every online tutorial I could find. I started posting my own content as I would learn new concepts on my Story by Data YouTube channel and then the blog site, storybydata.com. 
And that's that's really where the story began because after that I just could not stop learning. And to this day I'm still learning now how to program with R and Python and then kind of expanding my visualization skills to uh, Power BI, Click, in addition to the Tableau that I've already grown to love. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a daily thing, as I said. So yeah. you're daily, daily coding, you're daily coding. Yeah, I wish I understood half of it, but I'm certainly impressed that it keeps going on. But again, that's, I'm not the I, I, I don't touch anything. But uh, yeah. so what you know, early on there, what made you start to realize? Did you have some snags where it was like, okay, it's not about the analytics; it's about the base data I have is wrong or in, or needs to be better managed, or you know, what began you know the famous garbage in, garbage out story? What be you know, what are some early instances where you realized this is garbage I'm getting, I can't work with it. Did that happen? Yeah, I, I think that that all started with um, an actual project that I had to put together for work when I put together the visualization without understanding the underlying data. And then I was working with the business leaders at the time and they're like, well, this looks completely wrong because they had an understanding of what they were expecting. And that's where I realized that there was a disconnect in terms of what I was building versus what we needed to build. And it was all because the data underlying all the stuff had um, unclean data. So hmm. I was working with unclean okay. data. And yeah. that's kind of what inspired me in terms of, you know, focusing more on data quality and making sure that we clean it all up before we start visualizing. That can truth truth before meaning. Problems. Truth before meaning, for sure. Yes. For sure there. So, and you obviously had a sense of sort of building a personal brand early on, too. If you were starting to promote what you, or not actively promote, but just sharing what you're doing. This notion of, you know, story by data. I mean, you've got a lot of clever and very, you know, you've got, you've got a really strong personal brand that stays consistent with what feels like your philosophy and your approach. And that's what a lot of brands lack, I would say. So, yeah, and I would have to say that that all happened also by accident. I, in in no way, shape, or form, have ever thought I would be LinkedIn's top voice in data science and analytics, um, especially the first year. But then again, the second year, I was even more shocked because I didn't think you could get it two years in a row. Uh, but I wasn't really, you know, deliberately building a brand for myself. I didn't have any hopes and dreams of gaining a following. I really just wanted to learn and then I know you learn by doing and by teaching mm -hmm. so I would learn something do it and then record a video or write a blog post about what I did so I can refer to it later myself this way I don't have to kind of curate all the other blog articles that I read because I would make it simple for myself to understand uh, but yeah that it ended up growing uh, growing a big community which which I love yeah yeah no you've got a fabulous following and I think also you follow certainly one of the probably one of the first commandments of, of LinkedIn brand, personal brand building, which is just consistency. Just keep coming out with stuff, coming out with stuff. You never know what hits. Sometimes things explode. Sometimes they just kind of lay there that you thought were wonderful. I know we probably experienced kind of some of the same things. We talked some shop kind of offline on some of this, but uh, that consistency just keeps going. There's a lot of people who think, you know, I'm just posting it this week and then uh, nothing happened. So I'll wait a month and see what else happens. So maybe something will happen. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of checking here. Um, all right, Jason's on here. We got Russia. Who else? We got uh, Norway. This is wonderful. This has definitely become kind of a global uh, uh, community here. So so keep going. That's that's just great. So tell me about this book. I'm really interested. Is that a new book? This data literacy for kids book. That's just yeah. I think opening up sort of the 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 that market that kind of education to the the new generation of data leaders tell me about yes. how that came about so um so the way that came about so i'm actually writing another book called mothers of data science with kristen kerr and that's going to be final soon hopefully before mother's day that's the plan. okay oh great okay wonderful yeah i know i know kristen i think you, you one of yeah, you introduced so, me to the other i forget which one but yeah 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 and um so when i was thinking about that book a thought came to mind i'm like why don't i write a children's book because that's going to be quicker and easier to publish because uh, you know it has a few pages you put some pictures on it and it's a little bit easier than a full-on nonfiction book with interviews and so forth and i wanted to write a book on data literacy just kind of a basics of data and i partnered up with jordan morrow from click because he's the self-proclaimed uh, godfather of data literacy. And I was just chatting with him earlier. Um, 
We got to get him on the show. I got to get. I know you he's can in get our, him on the show. like data quality group there. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll hit him up in there. But no, we'd love to get uh, Jordan on the show here on the program. Yeah, absolutely. So so I messaged him uh, probably a year or two ago, and I said, "Hey, let's write a book." And he's just like, "Yeah, okay, let's do it." Uh, and we kind of put it off um, for a couple of months because we both just became really busy. And uh, at some point, he was in New York. He lives in I want to say Utah. I'm pretty sure it's Utah. And he was up in New York for a click conference, and we basically sat down at one of the breaks and wrote the entire book oh, in wow. about 20, 30 minutes, and then worked <laughs> with the illustrator. I know, it doesn't take long. Because he had a good idea of making this a treasure hunt, and we just took it from there, where the kids kind of go on an adventure, and you know they learn how to read data, analyze data, and communicate data. They go through this treasure uh, hunt where they get little tablets with clues, and um, it's, it's a short book. It's about 30 pages, but they only have like a sentence on each page. So it's very, very quick and easy to get through. But we just launched it like an hour ago. Is, so it's very new. Oh, really? Oh, it is. There is right in the middle of data literacy for kids. Really? Just an hour ago? Just, yes, just yeah. an hour ago. We literally like just launched it. Oh, well, as uh, so I went up on uh, uh, Amazon and I you know, okay. searched for you on Amazon to find all your book covers. I did that. I, I, I'm a just-in-time marketer here, so I did that about yeah, yes, an hour ago, or I guess uh, uh, six, uh, 59 minutes ago would make it. So yes. you, you, you posted it, and I, I captured it right away. So Oh, so that's fabulous. It's brand new, not steaming hot off the presses here. So you got to get Data Literacy for Kids by Kate and uh, Jordan. So you've got to check that out. So, so what's the plot? So what happens? So kids look for oh, data. Oh, you have to get it to find out. I'm not going to give this to Wayne. Give okay. this to Wayne. All right. All right. Well, so we'll wait for the, the Nickelodeon version as well. <laughs> but I think kid, kids got to learn data. I had an opportunity to, uh, I was at Dun & Bradstreet, so we had Bring Your Kids to Work Day, and they okay. had me do one of the sessions. We'll have to come back and talk about that because I used obviously used a bunch of toys. I didn't have the puppets yet, but I used a bunch of toys. And uh, I had a big bucket of blocks and I and and I threw them all over the the uh, the room. We had like seven or eight kids, ten kids per session. And I said, "This is big data." And I just threw these blocks all over the room. And the kids had different colored cups, and they had to go around and collect the the mm. um, blocks and figures that were like little rabbits and bears and some interlocking blocks that came together. And they had to collect all of them of the same color as their cup. Then they yeah. had to find the other partner and make something out of these blocks. And then, and so you'll appreciate this, the third step was we went out around the room and they had to tell us a story, mm -hmm. like what they did. So it was yep. really fun. And this, actually, the when we were done, the CMO of Dun & Bradstreet at the time, his kid was there and he said, well, now I understand master data. So that was, <laughs> it was good and bad at the same time. But that was, uh, it was, it was a fun, <laughs> you know, kids, I think, again, Lego works. What What kind of techniques do you use? I mean, you've got these, are your children old enough to start thinking data yet or? or... Yes. So I have um, two girls. One is almost four and the other one's uh, five and a half. And okay. they, they actually, so they see me sometimes on like making my videos. Um, one of them was just here right before we started going live. Okay. And they already know. And uh, my five-year-old copies me. She'll stand in front of a mirror and just like, I'm doing the data right now. <laughs> I'm <here." laughs> I'm like, what does it even mean to do the data? And she's like, That's the what data. You mean. <laughs> doing the data. And um, yeah, interestingly, a couple of weeks back, she's like, do you have to work? Because this is back when I used to uh, work in, in Manhattan and you know, uh -huh. leave the house. I work mostly from home now. And I'm like, well, maybe I don't. And she's like, but who's going to do the data if you're not there? I'm like, I don't know who's going to do it. <laughs> you're in charge of all data. That's it. So, yeah. uh, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, That's but they understand that. I mean, we actually, my husband and I did a career day for her when she was in pre-K, and we spoke about data science, data visualization. My husband's also working with data. Um, and it was really fun. We basically had, I believe it was Skittles or M&Ms, I think it was Skittles, mm -hmm. and each kid got to you know choose one color Skittles. Obviously, a lot of them just ate it. And I'm like, no, you're not supposed to eat the Skittles. <laughs> their sweaty little hand it would melt into their hands. I need to come up with something better. I figured Skittles would be fun for pre-K. Um, but then we would count up how many yellows we had, how many reds, and then we built okay. a whole bar chart on a nice poster board where they colored it in and they, you know, said, okay, most of us like red. And they were able to even understand that, you know, then this was a year or two ago. So it was, they get it. Kids understand. Yeah. Oh, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. And sorting is good. Yeah. That's for sure. 
and uh, colors. They just Lego. It's a good way to think. Yeah, Lego is great because you mean, can actually I, build it. I, I, that that's one of the more common metaphors that people use certainly at conferences i have a whole scrapbook i got to do a post on it of people using lego to explain data which i think is a way to especially when you're talking to the business side who doesn't want to understand the reference data architecture but you know all these things need to fit together and yeah uh, I was say, you have all like clean bar charts and then you have a piece that's kind of awkward and doesn't fit in you know you could talk about unclean data or un yeah, it un doesn't un work or this this you know this pin you get you know and they it. don't fit or clay or mm -hmm. whatever but I, you know my parent the anecdote i tell all the time is my parents told me when i was a kid instead of building with my lego blocks i sorted them so <laughs> i think that was where kind of taxonomies and sort of started early on for stuff you, came along but i have this i get this calm when i start to sort stuff i don't know about you, you probably get more of a calm when you build stuff so it's uh uh, you know, again, two sides of it there, truth and meaning, data and, and analytics, but these two things fit together. Yep. So what's now? So what's a big data story going on now that you think? Uh, obviously that, you know, I know one, but, you know, what are you working on? What am I working on? So my newest idea is to create a dedicated academy, and this is something I'm actively working on. I'm super excited about it. It's going to be centered around the data visualization, starting with, visual best practices, uh, which is going to be product agnostic, right? Just how do you yeah. make sure your chart tells the right story and it looks good and it's pretty and but not too pretty, like there's a balance. And then um, there will be a series after that that takes you kind of from, from zero to dashboard in Tableau, Quick, Power BI, potentially R and Python. And then from there, it's going to be kind of going from good to great. So there's going to be different levels, but it's all centered around data visualization. Uh huh. Oh, nice. Is that is that the name? Zero to dashboard. I like that name. Um, that's going to be the name of one of the series of courses, but the name will be Dedicated Academy. Oh, okay. And All right. Building the landing page as we well before we spoke, <laughs> not as we speak. I'm not working right now. Huh. Good. Good. So keeping that brand. So so yeah. did, was that was that a big brand discussion there? Whether you did K did with a K or with a C? You're not the first to say that. Like you want, I know, but it's like a, you know the double pun. Might have been too much, it, maybe. I felt like it might lose its meaning because people might not understand, especially maybe somebody who doesn't speak English as well. Uh -huh. Like dedicated is already a stretch from dedicated to data. Yeah. Um, I actually even have the trademark for dedicated that was recent a couple of months ago. Oh, good. Okay. Secured it. It's not an easy process. It takes forever. Yeah. Um, Costs a lot, but I think it was worth it because now dedicated is online. I'm yes, so online. Excited. We got the T. I don't have the T-shirt yet, but we got T-shirts. You got uh, uh, baby bibs. You got all kinds of stuff. So that's yeah, there are mugs. There's there's basically everything. There's all so. kind of fun stuff there. So I, I was thinking, I had an idea. There's you know, there's a lot of uh, COVID data out there right there's a tremendous amount of visualization and I, yeah. I i i thought maybe we should take a look when this is all over maybe come back uh, hopefully you'll come back before this is all over it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a little while and kind of look at what some of the best ones were because it's, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to sort of see the explosion over the last two weeks of you know you started off with some really like basic dashboards right cases you know, unfortunately, that's countries. Yeah. And now there's a tremendous amount of analytics going on top of that, right? So again, it started with the truth. Here's how many, here's the segmentation by geography. Well, we don't know if that's the whole truth, Scott. Right, but no, yeah, you're right. The reported, yeah. the reported yeah. truth. Yeah, the recorded truth, fair enough. And then uh, and then people are starting to get really fancy with it. And I think some people are like going way over the top with it. And um, But it'd be interesting to kind of look at that. I've been saving some that I think are cool. I think the flatten the curve, I think that's yeah. already a top 10 for sure. That concept, mm -hmm. which went from, you know, nobody really seeing that to, and, you know, you and I are part of the folks who know, you know, we're part of the group that knows probably, and everybody on this line too, we know more about data than 95% of the world out there. And we spend a lot of time with the 5% that knows a lot, but that other 95% has very little exposure to data or things like that. So that visualization of, Here's what happens if we don't do what we need to do. Here's what happens if we do. It's yeah. just become an instantly iconic um, visualization for what's going on there. But uh, anyway, take a look. I don't know. 
Maybe we'll get yeah, that. I think it's, I think Jordan, the judge, idea. too. We can kind of take a look at the top 10 uh, best data yeah, visualizations. I'll, I'll do a little plug here. There's a company called Panoply, um, and I'll tag them later, but they're basically doing a data visualization competition for the COVID data. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Yeah, they're going to select them. I'm, I'm actually the judge um, for that competition, and I can share a link for those that are interested in you know, taking a crack at it. But they're giving away three prizes, um, $1,000 each, that are being donated to, I think, the CDC Foundation or, yeah, that's probably it. Um, so I think that's really generous of them to, you know, make the prize a donation in, in the winner's name. And yeah. oh, I just can't it. wait to yeah. see what people come up with. That's right. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad I brought this idea up that obviously, again, you already had, you're already working on, you've already got prize money. You're like 19 steps ahead of me. So I'll remove myself from the whole process. No, but I'm going to say, let's come back when you've got those and you definitely want to show everybody else. So. Yeah, I, I wasn't too comfortable uh, visualizing it myself or, you know, there, there are a couple of visualizations out there that are kind of, you know, sometimes not accurate. And I feel like it's not a great data set to practice with if you if you haven't worked with data and don't understand it, because right. you can scare some people or you can make some people feel at ease, which should be scared. And I think you have to be really careful about that, because this is, like you said, there are deaths. A lot of people are being actually impacted um, negatively. So I think we have to be very careful about how we use it and don't just have it like, Ooh, fun data set. Let me go play with it. Yeah, there are plenty of data sets out there. This is serious stuff here. So, yeah. anyway, well, this is about, believe it or not, our time just flew by here. I mean, I have just zoom along. I'm trying to stay disciplined around a half hour show here. So, we'll have to have you back. Kate, it was wonderful talking to you as usual. And, uh, We'll catch up at some point here. we got a couple of groups that we're both part of that we're doing stuff in. Any last thoughts you want to share with folks on uh, what you're doing or, or what they should think about? Or No, I think we've covered everything that I'm doing. Um, I think I'm going to get back to work. Thank you so much for okay, letting good, me good, be good. on your live show. <laughs> it's always fun to talk to you and to watch you talk to yourself and to your puppets. So keep doing what you're doing. I love well, it. If somebody likes watching me talk to myself. I'll keep that going here. So everybody... That's it for Kate. Let's there we go. Let's get some claps for Kate. Well, I think we have a delay, so it'll take a moment before we see them. But thank you so much, Kate. Thanks for your time. Thanks for all the things you do for everybody in the data community. If you're not following her, then who are you, right? I mean, you should be following Kate no matter what. But thank you so much, Kate. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Okay. That was great. That was fun. She's just so fabulous. I love talking to her. That's for sure. So a couple of things right away, right? She came to it by accident. So I think a lot of us kind of stumbled into the data business, which is interesting, right? But we just get compelled by it. She's focused very much on how to start to communicate that. And I love the idea of being able to at least begin to share these concepts with the next couple of generations who are going to have to be more data literate than probably any of us, because uh, when all of us were growing up, me, I grew up before probably a lot of you, just age-wise, I'm not saying mentally, but certainly age-wise here, chronologically, data was like sort of this faraway thing, but now it is absolutely part of everybody's life. It's certainly part of every business for sure. So we got to make sure to, 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 that kids understand that, that they're comfortable with it, and that they can uh, move forward. And the data scientists of the future, the data management of the future, to get those basics done. So anyway, great talking everybody. Next week, we're coming in next week. We got Monday, we got Wednesday, we got Friday. We got Kathy Pentanella from uh, Quadient, I think it is, used to be called Neo Post. We got Jason Foster calling in from the UK. We're gonna have it a little early on Wednesday there. I'll get the time because British summertime shows up like uh, this weekend. So my clocks are completely confused. And then my buddy, longtime storyteller, I love this guy, Jonathan James Kramer. Again, another novelist. Maybe we have a novelist every every week here, but uh, Kramer is, is, is a fabulous guy. We did a lot of adventures at Dun & Bradstreet and beyond, so I can't wait to see it. And we're booking guests through April. I had to get a calendarly thing so I can uh, get everybody scheduled here. But thank you so much. Remember, truth before meaning, no matter what, Stay safe out there. This is Scott Taylor, the Data Whisperer, saying thanks again. Cheers.